Y'all paying how much for GPUs? What's wrong with your thirsty faces? Also, it looks like we got another media conglomerate on our hands. And if you have Eufy security cameras, you might want to um fix that. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brent host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this very here interwebs. And in case you want to suggest a news story for me to cover in tomorrow's episode, you can do so over on our Discord server, as well as just chat with the various community members of UFD Tech and Hot News. We'd love to have you there. Speaking of love to have you, y'all like to have GPUs because a new report has come out conglomerating all of the data of how much GPUs have been costing over the past few months and y'all are paying way too much. They're always sold out. Nobody can actually get them at retailers, which is telling me that y'all are purchasing them and it appears that at least in Europe, you're paying two to three times what the GPUs should cost. Radeon RX 6000s are going for roughly double and RTX 30 series are going for roughly triple how much they're supposed to be, which shows us two very clear things. Number one, more people want Nvidia than AMD. And number two, maybe that's not true. And Nvidia wants to surcharge more than AMD does. Hard to say either way. I'm sure we could figure that out. You just read the subtext right there, my friends. We've got pricing. As you can see here, they showed the different pricing of the different GPUs as they were coming out. You can see the 3090 started at 1549 euro, all the way back in the wee old age of never. And and then finally, as of right now, May 16th, costing $31.99. But that's not all of it. A lot more GPUs went up in price. As you can see here, the 3080 coming in at 317% more. The 3060 sitting at 204% and the 6800 sitting at 159% increase, whereas the 6800 XT is at 100%. Now, obviously, there's not a ton of conclusions that you can come to just based on pricing increase. However, it likely does point to some sort of demand spike that happening and you'll see less of a price increase on things that aren't as in high of demand. You find this when you just go on to the used market, try to go grab a Series X from a used website and you'll find that they're generally cheaper than a PlayStation 5 or even a PlayStation 5 digital edition because the demand on the PS5 is way higher than the Series X at this point. So this could be showing us how much each GPU is selling in its respective categories and what the demand on each one is like with the RTX 3080 being the most popular if we can use that deduction and the 3060 following it shortly thereafter. Now, while this data is simply from Europe and it hasn't been necessarily done for American retailers, you can kind of see that this is happening with the likes of Newegg. They're not necessarily charging more. They're just charging the bundles, but the bundles don't really add up in price. And you're wondering, why am I paying $200 extra? I know the struggle, my friends, when I lived in South Africa, I had to pay South African rates for GPUs, but it has even gotten worse over there. Just taking a quick scroll through where 3060 costing 18,000 Rand is absurd. The one that hurt my heart the most was the RTX 3090 costing 50,000 Rand. And if I could just break that down for you in a quick second, that is $3,500. And I bet your bottom dollar, if I was in South Africa, I would have had to pay that. And that's not good for me. And I also know just from working with Wootware for many, many years that they would not be charging those prices if they weren't being charged those prices to actually bring those GPUs in. So it's probably happening higher up in the food chain rather than at a retailer level, but it's just, it's just a rough world out there, friends, but it doesn't have to be rough for you, especially when it comes to ordering your meat or specifically buying your meat, okay? Not everybody orders their meat, but with ButcherBox, today's episode sponsor of Hot News, you absolutely can. Listen, I don't have a whole lot of time to go to the grocery store. We got a whole lot going on in our lives. We're moving right now. We were away for eight weeks. We have a special needs kid and just, you know, I whole run this whole an enterprise thing that I'm doing right here. And so ButcherBox helps me to make sure that I still get Get my protein intake while also getting it in the highest quality that I possibly can because you get the high quality meat delivered straight to your door. They're committed to premium meat, 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised crate free and wild caught seafood. And they want to make it affordable at under $6 a meal and shipping as free. And fun fact, the last time I did this butcher box ad spot last week, I showed you all a piece of chicken and I put it back in the box and I left that box in my room and 
I had wasted that chicken. So sad me. Anyways, you don't have to be sad because if you click our link in the video description, you can get the free BBQ bundle with ButcherBox, which gives you two New York strip steaks, six burgers, and five pounds of drumsticks for free in your first box with them. So check them out at the link in the video description. That's a lot of free meats, my friends. Uh, big thanks to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Now let's talk about a new RTX 30 series card, the RTX 3060 Revision 2 from Gigabyte coming out. It's just the one with the hash rate limiter so that you can't mine on it. Galax announced theirs, Gigabyte's announcing theirs, they're calling it Revision 2. So easy designations of knowing which one Nvidia attacked. And Noctua is gonna be attacking us with better coolers sometime soon. Their passive fanless cooler should be coming very soon, at least according to their Twitter response. We've been waiting for this for ages. It was supposed to come out, I believe, late in 2020. It got pushed back, obviously, due to what everything that happened last year. And now we're still waiting for it to come out. Noctua coming very soon, hopefully. And hopefully coming very soon are gigantic Monstro chips from AMD. I know, I know 64 cores is already gigantic and Monstro, but there's a new roadmap or rather an old roadmap that has now showing that us that AMD's plans for Zen 4 on Epic is to introduce more than 64 cores. You can see here that their lineup of Zen 3 7003 worked out 64 cores, 128 threads. They're trying to bring that out to over 64 cores on Zen 4, but not necessarily indicating what we're gonna get for the desktop. Can we get more than 16 cores? Can we get more than 32 cores? AMD, can you give me 64 cores on an AIM-5 socket, please? Why do I need it? I don't, I just want it because it's just good to flex on all the people who can't have nice things, okay? Only thing that gives me joy in life. But one of the companies that AMD was working with to create a portable handheld gaming system uh, might not have any joy left in the company because they've announced that they might have to soon be filing for bankruptcy. Smack Z is the name of the company. This has been a sordid history of a company that promised that they were gonna bring this out, I believe, all the way back in 2017, maybe 2018, but a lot of people were just questioning its price point, their ability to actually develop the product and for them to bring it out. Well, it's now been announced that a private investor pulled money out of the company and so now they're looking at facing bankruptcy. And with the company reporting that they're gonna try to get all of their resources to putting out refunds to the people who pre-ordered this device, but a lot of the private investor money that has been coming in has actually been going out to customer refunds because people have been requesting them since they actually didn't deliver the product on time. And there's no better time for Hades to be released on PlayStation than now or yesterday or six months ago. I'd love to see it. This was my game of 2020 and now Hades PlayStation 4 rating has been spotted on a Korean certification board. The game rating and administration committee getting that game, it needs to be everywhere. Hades, a great game. It should just, everybody should experience it. If you like roguelikes, even if you don't, just compel Telling storytelling, beautiful art design, fantastic gameplay, great voice acting, amazing soundtrack. This was a truly remarkable game to play in 2020, and I'm glad that it's coming out to more things, or at least hopefully it will sometime soon. And now hopefully you can get your money out of the meme market. Let's get into the GameStop Bitcoin update. GameStop going up, you can't stop it, up 13%, almost crashing back up to $200, it's at 180. It's making moves, my friends. It's been a good week to be in the GameStop market. I can't say the same for crypto. Bitcoin up 2%, it was down 2% when I was preparing this whole thing. Actually, the entire market's flipped. I prepared this and it was down 2% across the board. Anyways, Bitcoin up to 44,000. It actually had partially of a rough day because of certain events unfolding on Twitter as one does with a completely stable currency, all right? Elon Musk can affect everything. He tweeted out indeed in reference to the idea that Tesla might be selling all of its Bitcoin holdings, at which point the market was like, oh no, Tesla's not believing in us. And then Elon Musk was like, to clarify speculation, Tesla has not sold any Bitcoin, which why would you have to clarify that Elon if you didn't insinuate it, all right? People inferred what you insinuated. Speculation was your fault. You said, you didn't need to, Elon. Also, just a fun fact, apparently Elon Musk impersonators on Twitter have stolen more than $200 million in cryptocurrency since October, which is a lot of money, which in case you're not on Twitter, people like hijack verified users and then change their name to Elon Musk and then change their profile picture to look like Elon Musk. And they made $2 million because people had just given them Bitcoin. It came to a head at some point last year where a whole lot of verified users actually did it. Like it was even on the president Barack Obama's, Joe Biden's, Elon Musk. Everybody's Twitter account was 
was like, hey, if you give me one Bitcoin, I'll give you two. And then you were tweeting out. And so Twitter had to block everybody who was verified. And there was also a point where if you changed your name to Elon Musk on Twitter, Twitter would just suspend you immediately because they were having such a hard time controlling everything. Anyways, controlling the crypto market is impossible. Ethereum up 2% was down percent. You can see the crash it had after lunch. It just, it, it needed to take a little nap, had a carb dump, needed to recover, and now it's doing that later in the day. Dogecoin, however, is still down, down with 3.74%. It was down roughly 8% when I checked on it earlier, under 50 cents. That's halfway to a dollar, my friends. It's kind of a sad reality we're living in, but Tesla's not living in any sad reality because they can mega cast dive for their Model Y with the first Model Y Megacast being developed at the Gigafactory, which is actually remarkable because this is going to be a huge stepping stone for them creating more affordable cards. It's gonna be part of their structural battery pack and they have the world's largest hydraulic press to just stamp all of that metal together to create the actual structural frame of the Model Y and the upcoming cars that they're gonna be releasing such as the Cybertruck. It's good to see that they're developing that and Canoe is developing a mighty tempting price point being at under $35,000, the sweetest little camper van you ever did see. It's just being all cute, ooh, ooh, or it could be rough and rugged and just have a, I mean, this is like Hello Kitty going to a metal concert. It's just like, it works, but also doesn't. Anyways, the company is saying that they're gonna be trying to get the car out for less than $35,000 with the fully loaded version being at 50 grand. I'm going to put heavy doubt on this, especially with a company that's a startup that hasn't shown any track record of manufacturing. I wouldn't necessarily trust their pricing in a brand new product segment. And I wanna trust Windows 10 ARM, but now it has Photoshop support. It's now native support. I'm just wondering, this is, I, like I wanna support Windows 10 ARM because it should be developed as a competitor. Everything that Apple's doing with Mac OS and the M1 chips, it's good to see. I'm just wondering if the prevalence of companies developing their software for the M1 MacBooks, we might start seeing some like trickle down effects of companies being like, oh, I guess we did most of the work. Yeah, sure. Here you go, Windows 10 ARM. Go play with Photoshop now. And you should go play with the TV so that you can watch more content from the new merger between Warner Media and Discovery. AT&T is fusing them together in an amalgamation that they're trying to take on the mouse with. All right, all of the giant companies and franchises that you have come to love are now being bought out with a whole stock option type deal with uh, as you can see on the screen has all of these things included parts of DC Comics but not all of the games like some of the Warner Brothers games aren't being part of this but some are it's a really confusing thing that's going down but now it's being merged because you got to destroy the mouse somehow and you got to pay the bill somehow Twitch wants you to do it a little less because they're changing the monetization rules with how you can buy subs over on that platform because they're going to start regionalizing the pricing in different countries, starting with Turkey and Mexico on May 20th, which will result in a lower fee to the actual streamer because it's been that every country has to pay roughly $5 and then the streamer gets a cut of that. But now they will still get a cut, but only of the regionalized amount, which could drastically lower the income for a lot of streamers. But it would allow more people in those countries, thanks to the regionalized pricing, to actually afford a subscription to their favorite streamer and Twitch announcing that they're going to have a transition plan in place where for the first three months they're going to cover 100% of the cost in case there is any dip although Twitch has said that in the people that they've tested this out with they've actually seen a sharp increase in the amount in the total revenue of what they're bringing in but then after that they're going to decrease the payments over the next nine months in order to have it so that you're fully supported financially Apple wants you to not pay a single cent though when it comes to their new lossless streaming on Apple Music it's going to be added in June for no extra cost you don't need to buy Spotify Hi-Fi or whatever it's going to be called on that, Apple Music's given to you for free, and Google Phone's gonna give you a free announcement of who's calling you. They want to announce you. They've spoken the caller ID, okay? Apple already has this on iOS. It freaks me out every time I'm wearing my AirPods and it says, hey, Buff Snuffer sent you a text message. Do you want me to read it to you? No, I do not want you to read me Snuff Buffer's message, okay? I don't want this on Google either. Just don't say what's going on. But you can see what's going on in other people's houses with the Eufy cameras because there's been a huge privacy breach where people had access to other people's cameras, live feeds, and recorded cams so that they could just even control their actual devices. It wasn't just, hey, you can view it. You can pan, tilt, and do everything that you want with them. This was being reported all over the internet with people being like, what's going on? Eufy came out eight hours later saying, hey, it was a software bug with our server 
server upgrade and we fixed it, okay? And we want you to unplug and reconnect your device and then log out and log back in again and everything should be set, which a lot of people's responses were, why did you tell us so late? As well as, why wouldn't you just force everybody out already? Because as long as somebody else doesn't log out, they can still view your stuff. It's not a matter of you being able to view your feed. If you log out and log back in, people can still view your feed. So they should force it on their end rather than depending on the customer to do it. I don't want to show people me scratching my bunions, all right? I got a camera right back there. You don't need to see that. Stop watching me. Yuffie, not doing great stuff there. And Epic Games not doing great stuff, suing the company Enreal for sounding too much like Unreal, which real is not even sounding like that anyways. This is something that we've reported on previously because it's been an ongoing saga where Epic is saying that, hey, Enreal's name is too much like Unreal, which we have Unreal Engine and all the stuff we do and Enreal and Unreal can't be figured apart, okay? We got Epic Games making Unreal Engine stuff. Enreal is a China-based company that makes an augmented reality headset. Epic Games makes augmented reality software. If they're the same, give us money. Which Intel wants you to give them more money by, by upgrading your motherboard, your power supply, your RAM, because you're growing DDR5, PCI Express 5, and Alder Lake, you're, you're upgrading. Spend all their money on Intel. Watch yesterday's episode of Hot News right there. I'll see you tomorrow, friends. Cheers. Thank you.